Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about weak acid strong base titrations. Specifically, we're going to look at a case where we have a strong base up in our burette, like say sodium hydroxide, and a weak acid down in our flask. And in this video, we'll calculate the pH before the titration starts. In another video, which I'll link to below, we'll calculate the pH along two different points of the titration. So this works a little differently than a strong acid base titration because our weak acid only partially dissociates and that changes how we do our calculations. So first let's take a look at what the initial pH will be and how we So for this particular titration, we know that we have 0.5 molar HF. And it doesn't even tell us the volume, but actually that doesn't matter because all the pH depends on is the concentration of our H+. Plus. So we have HF down here, and we're going to eventually add some sodium hydroxide from up here. But we haven't done that yet. So this is the initial setup where we just have acid down in our flask, and all we want to know is what's the pH of the acid. Well, that's actually just like a weak acid or weak base problem where you're just trying to determine the pH. So basically, if you've done a weak acid, weak base pH problem, this is identical. So what we're going to do is we're going to react our acid with the water, so that we can come up with an equation to use for our ice table. So we know that our acid is HF, and we're gonna react that with water. Remember that our acid is gonna give up a proton, and that's gonna mean that our HF becomes F minus. That's HF without its H. And our water is gonna gain the proton. That's true whenever you react an acid with water, the acid gives up its proton. And remember that our water is liquid here, so we're going to disclude that from our ice table. And our ice table will have HF, F minus, and H3O plus. So the reason we need to use an ice table is that our HF, all of it is down there in solution, right? Let's actually erase this and I'll draw a little different picture of it. Right, so we have a bunch of HFs, but some of them are together and some of them are apart. And only these ones that are apart increase the concentration of hydronium ions. The ones that are together don't. And because this is a weak acid, not all of them split apart. And that's what our Ka is telling us, that only some of them split apart. So we need to find out the equilibrium concentration of this guy, of the H+. And that will actually let us calculate the hydronium ion concentration and then the pH. So what's our initial concentration of HF? 0 0.5. And that's in molar, remember. We start out with 0 F minus, we're assuming basically initially they're all together, and basically 0 H3O plus. Turns out there's actually a little H3O plus because water can sometimes split apart by itself, but it's such a small amount of H3O plus that we can ignore it for these problems. Change, how is it going to change? Well, our HF is going to decrease in concentration, because it's a reactant, so it's going to drop, and our F minus is going to increase, and our H3O is going to increase, and they're going to increase by the same amount. So for example, if I have one molecule of HF split, it gives me... 1 F minus and 1 H3O plus. So that's why those X's are all the same. For however much my HF drops, my H3O plus and my F minus will increase. At equilibrium, we'll get 0 0.5 molar minus X, X, and X. So that I get by just adding these two. So 0 0.5 minus X gives me what I have at equilibrium. 0 plus X gives me what I have at equilibrium. So now I know an equation for my equilibrium concentrations of each of those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug that into an expression for K. But first, let's write our expression for K. Ka is equal to products over reactants. In this case, my products are F minus and H3O plus. Remember that our products are always on the right side of our chemical equation. And our only reactant we're going to include is HF. And that's because H2O is liquid, so it's not included. All right, now I need to go ahead and plug in all the numbers I have. So I'm going to plug in this for Ka and each of these equations for the concentration at equilibrium. What we're doing is solving for the equilibrium concentration. And that means we're going to get 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4 is equal to x up top for fluorine, x up top for H3O+, plus, all over 0 0.5 minus x for our HF. Now here we can take advantage of the fact that my Ka is really small. And if your Ka is really small, we can actually drop the x down here. And that's almost always true for our weak acid, weak base problems. When I drop that x, it makes the algebra a little simpler. Now I just multiply both sides by 0 0.5. And what that's going to give me is 1.75 times 10 to the minus 4 
my point fives cancel out on this side, and I'm just left with x squared. And then all I have to do is take the square root of both sides. So what that's going to give me is x is equal to 0 0.013 molar. So x is pretty small, and that's the whole reason we could drop x there. Because notice that my 0.5 molar minus x is going to be basically 0.5 still. So that x is pretty small, so we can neglect it. Now what is that x telling me? Well that's telling me the equilibrium concentration of H3O+, plus, the equilibrium concentration of F-, minus, and if I subtract it from 0.5, the equilibrium concentration of HF. So that is my equilibrium concentration. That's the key I need to get all of my equilibrium concentrations. And we might remember that our pH is equal to negative log of our hydronium ion concentration. So that's the last step here. pH is equal to negative log of my hydronium ion concentration, which is 0 0.013. When I plug that into my calculator, what I will get is 1.89. So that's the pH at the bottom of my flask there before I start the titration. This is exactly the same as a weak acid, weak base problem, where you're just finding the pH of a weak acid or base. Because notice we haven't done any titration, it's just at the beginning. So now what we're going to do in the next video is go ahead and calculate the pH after we add some sodium hydroxide. So if you want to know how to do that, go ahead and check out the next video, which I'll link to below, and I'm guessing it's showing up in the suggested video section. Thanks for watching. Bye.